Hi people, this is Nick from Acton Custom. I wanted to do a video since I'm right in the middle of installing a Watts linkage on a contemporary Cobra. Uh, if you want to take a look, I'm, I'm assisted by my uh, lovely assistant and wife Bonnie. Um, so if you want to take a peek in here, you can see the, well, you can see the Jag rear suspension, the independent rear suspension with the four shock, the four coil over shock setup. Um, that, when it's installed in a Jag, has got some uh, tow links to, which have got very mushy, uh, non-supportive bushings in them. Uh, when we start putting these Jag rear ends into a uh, contemporary or a high-powered car like this with foot-wide tires that get a lot of traction, there isn't any um, support or enough support forward and rearward on these things under acceleration and braking. And you finish up with problems like this where the wheel is... Um, trying to climb right through that inner fender on the car. Um, that's how we came up with the Watts linkage setup. This contemporary um, that we're looking at in front of us here is a coilover front suspension and a Watts linkage equipped rear suspension. Um, so this is one of the later contemporaries but there was no Watts linkage installed on this car and this video is to show you how to install one and why it wasn't installed on this car. Uh, if you look at this, you can see that I have chopped off a front bracket from, and this is the new one I'll be putting on, I've chopped off a front bracket on the chassis for the Watts linkage. The rear one is still in place here, you can see that. Um, so, the reason I've chopped this off, and you'll see it on the other side with your aha moment, um, the reason I've chopped this off is because it's in the wrong place, and I've managed to make it work on the other side by leaving this one in position, which is good, because this one's the one right by the gas tank where I don't want to do the welding and sparks and stuff like that, although I do have my welding blanket there to cover anything that's crucial. Um, so when we're installing the watts linkage on the car, let's take a quick look at this. I've taken the sway bar out of the way. I would disconnect my um, shocks for this and I would get the control arm um, raised and lowered in height to uh, a, reasonable, a reasonably level position or in the middle of the suspension travel. Having done that, I've got to level my frame, or I've got to measure the level of my frame, uh, and I've got to make sure that my frame is level to my... Let's try and do things in order here. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to trim the lip off the hub carrier, So I've trimmed that piece off the hub carrier, mm -hmm. and I'm getting ready to install the top center link of the Watts linkage. Um, that will get pulled down, clamped down, and T-nutted and bolted into place on the hub carrier. Having got this installed, we'll take our installation fixture that comes with the Watts linkage kit. We'll make sure that the frame is level or at the same level as this. And then when we come to install our Watts linkage brackets, this will be lining up at this end because that bracket was already there. What you'll be doing, if you don't have these brackets there, is you'll be using this fixture and leveling the top of this up or the bottom of this up with the same level on the frame so that they're all moving in the same plane. Having got that set up and these brackets uh, tacked in place, 
you can then try the suspension through its travel and make sure you're not pulling the tacks off or you don't have anything in the wrong place. Um, so that's the gist of installing this thing into the car that doesn't have one. You can see here we're installing one that did have one. When I take that fixture and I put that close to the center of the uh, center link, when I line it up with that rear, you can see how far out that hole is from the grinding and, and the work that I've been doing here to remove that previous one. So you can see how far out of position, better with the light, mm -hmm. uh, so you can see how far out of position this was where it's got to be lowered quite a bit and relocated on the frame. Uh, that's about all I can think of to show you on this side while we're in the process of breaking it down and setting it up, installing this top link, getting our levels correct. Um, something I'm glad I didn't have to do is cutting and removing that because even with the P-clamps undone I, and the awkward position you're in, I finished up cutting the wires on this in the interests of full disclosure. So it's difficult to work in here. Um, it's a little cramped. It's close to your bodywork and your fiberglass, but we got it all done. Uh, so yeah, let's take a quick look on the other side at how it looks. So this is the Watts linkage with the center link T-nutted and bolted to the hub carrier. Uh, the control arm was set up to being in the middle of the travel. Uh, the center link is fairly straight up. Actually, it's a little below the center of the travel. You can see from the angle of the center link. And we've utilized the bracket at the rear that it had. You can see when you look at some of the scratches and shiny spots behind the um, parts that I've, I've touched up on the frame where I've relocated this bracket down quite a bit in this instance. Um, so we've got the two brackets set up on the frame. We've got the center link set up on the hub carrier. We've got things in the middle of the travel. We used our fixture to make sure that this angle and the angle of the frame line up with each other so they're parallel. So now you can see this Watts linkage is attached to the frame, it's attached to the suspension, and we can run the suspension up and down through its travel, and it can move more than it needs to uh, in the up and down and the working uh, position in the car, but the Watts linkage is stopping it moving forward and backward. So hopefully that's going to stop the tires trying to climb through the inner fenders of the car. And um, hopefully it's going to stop the car from breaking this weld on the inner of the lower control arms, which is what it has done on some cars that I've seen, uh, especially those that have had modified lower control arms that have been uh, altered to length to make the track specific to fit the Cobra. Um, so there's a little overview of a Watts linkage being installed and you can see some of the hardware that we supply, the installation fixture that comes with it to help put it into the car, um, and there's a full set of instructions that comes with this, with these parts and with this kit to um, assist you with installing it in the car and making it work on your Cobra. Um, as I said, this is a contemporary. It's the Jag independent front uh, rear suspension. And um, this Watts linkage makes all the difference in the world to how the car um, puts the power to the road without the rear wheels trying to move forward and backward under acceleration and under braking because there's a lot of rubber going to the road and a lot of forces going on with this rear end. 
So if you can put a watch linkage on it, if you can add our gussets on the lower control arms, those triangular gussets that we make, you can see all the stuff on our website, uh, you'll have a pretty bulletproof Jag rear end in your Contemporary Cobra or your Jag based rear suspension Cobra. Thanks for watching.